I'm trying to read the Bible, but it, you know, all the begetting and the begotten and, and, and all that. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got to be kidding. You know what I mean? If they think you're going to read all that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. That was, that uh, was quick, John. I'll give you that one. It's just, you know, I had to make a quick decision of whether or not I wanted to say it or not. But That's why he's famous, man. That's why he's famous. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like kind of like George Harris and John Lennon. Don't he? <laughs> I like that jacket as well. Hey. You've been you've been talking to yourselves, haven't you? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Talking to you, going, oh yeah, that's right, you know. But, yeah, yeah. I'm, good. I'm good. I'm at home and warm and comfy and everything. Oh, fantastic! Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, that's great, man. And you're coming from Minnesota, right? I live in Minnesota. I live in Hopkins, Minnesota. Yeah, very nice. What yeah. made you move to Minnesota? Well, I met a girl there, like. 1970 uh, and, and uh, we were on tour and I wanted to get married and I fell in love with a girl and Kathy Wiggins and we got married and uh, here we are all these years later now it's yeah and that's and that's it and that's how you get to Minnesota kids so in case you're wondering you have, have a couple of kids and everything like that nice that's very, <laughs> wow, very cool, man. That's a great story yeah, yeah that is very beautiful Pardon? were you touring already when you met her yeah, it was actually our first tour of America. We played up in Fargo, North Dakota, and then we wow. drove on to Minneapolis to uh, meet the agent. Like we had a few days off, and we were playing in St. Paul, a place called St. Catherine's College. Anyway, uh, so we yeah. did all that, and then I went to a club there to party and enjoy, and Ramsey Lewis and stuff like that. It was great, and wow. I saw this girl and and Kathy and. Uh, that was the end of that for me, really. Um, I just followed around the club like a dog, you know, licking the floor and everything. And, <laughs> it was great. And, and biting things. It was, you know, it was, it was really inspiring. And, oh, wow. Uh, and then I lost her. I went to the hotel, went back to the hotel with the roadie. And I went there and the band was having a party. Mm. Well, the inn downtown, you know, the way that happens. And mm. uh, there she was. This girl, Kathy, was at the party, so I had a roadie who's from Minneapolis. Am I going on about this? No, no, no go keep right going. Ahead. This is yeah, where it's it's beautiful, interesting. It's a famous story in my mind. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it makes room for other people, I've, you know, every time I say it. But anyway, I met her that night and invited her out for dinner. We went and I did and fell in love and got married and had kids and all of that rest of it. Kathy passed away on in 2009, as it happens. Oh, and, um, sorry. Just right out of the blue, really, no, no warning, nothing like that. But, but it was a great life. We had a great life, ups and downs, like everybody else, and all the things. And yeah. Really good knockout fights and <laughs> amazing <laughs> sexual encounters. And yeah, it was, great. it was great, man. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Oh, that's a beautiful story. How many yeah. kids? Two boys, uh, Joe, named after my dad, and uh, Sean Michael. Uh, it was a which is a name that Kathy liked. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, two great lads, and they've grown up now. Of course, they're doing good, and um, they've been through hell, but they came out of it. And you know the way, you know, you know the way teenage years can be. Oh God! And, yeah, 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 absolutely. But yeah, I'm 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 really kind of I'm getting a bit old now. But I'm really very happy with the way it all worked out. Really nice. I mean, I'd like to have Kathy with me, but wasn't to be so. Right. Uh, she's still with you yeah just not physically that's all yeah yeah she is she is yeah i've got her stuff hanging around and stuff and um, <laughs> just just great you know and i'm getting all this work and you know that's people, great man the old records are still on the radio yeah still, still make a bit of dough because they pinched all the money from us you know right away did they so, really so oh, as soon as we started making money it was all gone <laughs> wow it was terrible all of that side of it the band story was bloody awful, but uh, we had a great time in the meantime making records and playing with the Beatles and everything, you know. Uh, yeah. 
it was really something else. We met all the big giants, you know, the music. And right. We actually got to sit in the room with them while they were doing what they did, you know what I mean? No way. Wow. Well, Eric Clapton working out guitar solos and, you know, right. stuff like that, yeah. Billy Preston just killing the piano and smiling at you, making you feel good, you know. Oh, my God. It was were a fantastic you, experience, honestly, God. Were you starstruck then by meeting those guys, or, or were you? did you yeah, feel like you were one of the crew? Of course I was. I was, on, I was, I was like 23, I mean, so I was, I, was right. like, I was a little bit grown up. But, you know, we're talking about Beatles here, you know, we're talking yeah. about Eric Clapton, we're talking about yeah. all of that, you know. It was fantastic, honestly. Well, I know it's like 58. I met Chuck Berry for crying out loud. Wow. Oh my wow. God. He rubbed his elbow on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. Better than that, you know what I mean? So, of course. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, I think it's 58 years ago today that the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. And not today, this was, month, this month. Wow. 50, 50 years ago? 58. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? A long time, isn't it? Yeah. And they're long still, time. I mean, still influential. Everybody that we've had on talks about them, any interaction they've had with them, meeting them getting to be around them it's crazy yeah yeah they've impacted so it's many people's lives the Beatles have been like a real constant in our lives <laughs> yeah so many it's, musicians it's there it was, it was incredible really i gotta i gotta ask you the same question i've asked other 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 british musicians we've had on was getting to america and that part of that british invasion a goal for you guys yeah yeah you know uh, yeah it really was all the stuff we liked was american you know, wow. the bars, the clothes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything about it, you know what I mean? Maybe not the hairdressers, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and you guys are going on on that tour now. Todd Rodgren, Christopher Cross, Jason Chef, uh, Denny Lane. How did that start? How did that come about? Uh, well, for me, uh, uh, there's some promoters in New York City, 21st Century Artists, and mm -hmm. I've done some work for them before. And mm -hmm. they, they had this idea to put this show together. And um, they put the show together and they invited me to come along. And it was really as simple as that. Um, wow. I'd, I'd done work with them before. They're great people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a good tour. And we did the first one a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, if you like. Oh, wow. And uh, we had a great time on it. We all kind of got along okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, singing the songs together. And that was a Beatles tour too, like. Yep. We were doing the White Album which is an incredibly wow. difficult album to do. On. Yeah, that's a hard one to go yeah. after. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, they decided to do it again and, and use, you know, uh, Rubber Soul and Revolver. And we've all been our own. <laughs> yeah. Expressing ourselves. You know, the way those songs, when we were kids, and, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm including all of us here. When yeah. we were kids, those songs were in your brain. Oh, yeah. You knew them. And when you listen to the records, you find yourself knowing the words, mm -hmm. you know, and you can cut most of the chords because you learned them back then, you know. Yeah, so yeah. It's great. It's great to go out and then actually play with these guys are great, all of them, you know what I mean? They're all great. They yeah. all play every day. Right. Know? Todd Runkren, Christopher Cross, fabulous Jason, all these guys. Yeah. Danny, I've known Denny for years. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Funny guy. Anyway. Yeah. So just doing it and bringing the songs to life and a great audience that loves it, mm -hmm. you know, it's really a great time for us. It really is. You know. Did you meet uh, um, Todd and Christopher and Jason? Did you meet them during this tour? Or have you met them before? Uh, I've met, well, Todd produced uh, one of our Baby Blue. He produced that and Day oh, After Oh, I didn't Day. know that. Uh, yeah, in the, in the old days. So I've known, known Todd slightly since since then, 1971 or two or something. Wow. And... Wow. Uh, so, um, yeah, so it was great to get getting to know him again. And, and then I'd never met Jason or Christopher. Mm. Uh, uh, Mickey Golans was on that leg of the tour as Mickey well. I never really met him, so it was great for yeah. me. And I'm a big fan, you know, of music. And, you know, mm -hmm. these guys are big stars, and when they perform, uh, it's magic watching them. You know wow. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They really do put it out. You know, right. every single day. You know, I do my best to do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but I always think think of these people as super. You know, Superman. Yeah, yeah. No, that's nice that you're. I mean, 
to be that humble and to be who you are though with those people too because it is kind of funny you for kind of forget you're part of a show when you're with other people that you've admired forever you're like can i just watch it i just want to be an audience member I, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the way well that's the way i feel about it yes it's great Love when it. something like that starts and you haven't met some of the people that you've worked with but you've only known them from afar do you guys do anything to bond before you go out on tour or is it just about the work and the music and stuff yeah, I think that's what we do to bond. Uh, we, we we do the best performance we can of, of mm -hmm. the music, and, and you try and kind of earn your way in there, you know, yeah. as a performer and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that's really what we've done. Now, I don't know what Todd and Krista did, you know, before they thought he could have done whatever they liked, you know. <laughs> I'm a pretty liberal guy, you know, so... <laughs> 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 oh, that's great a stash of vodka in the fridge i'll tell you that go go for it we're all everybody <laughs> i said you could do whatever you want i wasn't even kidding go for it i'm pretty we're pretty sure dale was it. i'm talking about the fridge on the oh fridge. the fridge in the oh. <laughs> i thought you were letting us know you had liquor in your fridge i was like go ahead we'll wait no. we'll stall <laughs> i've got a cup of coffee here this is oh. good <laughs> cheers beautiful um, so take me back to, you know, when you were younger, what was your segue into music? Was it something you always wanted to do or did you fall into it in a different way? Um, I never wanted to do it. I wasn't, I wasn't like, you know, born dying to be a musician or something, but I heard Elvis and this is the truth. Mm -hmm. When I was 11 years old, I heard blue suede shoes on the radio mm -hmm. and that completely changed my life. Wow. I mean, that wow. was what actually... I really became conscious of music. I went in the front parlor, got my brother's guitar out and started to teach myself to play. And I stopped uh, going out at night after I got back from school. Mm -hmm. You know, I just stayed mm -hmm. in the house and played the guitar. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a fantastic experience. And uh, my mom would sit me on the back of the couch, I'd play having a wheel or something, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, the way you do, you know, just yeah. the way any kid does, you know, you fall in love with something and music right. you took me over then. That's all I did then, you know? Wow. Yeah. Were your parents cool with it? Like you going into music? Yeah, they loved it. They uh, they, they were encouraging me right from day one. Not wow. really to be, and it wasn't with the idea of being some kind of rock star or something, mm -hmm. or making records. It was just learning to play and the music yeah. was so good. Right. And Chuck Berry. And Buddy um, Holly and all of those guys, Eddie Cochran and Little Richard, you know, Fats Domino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, was a, I was straight into rock and roll. I didn't go through the blues or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. The rock. And uh, that's the kind of music I played then all my life was beat music. You know? Wow. It's still my favorite kind of music. Uh, I just, you know, I just loved it. Um, you know, you learn to play as good as you can, don't you, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, and you're surprised when somebody asks you to come down and, and play <laughs> a little bit for them or come and play with our band tonight. Right. You know, I was working on the docks in Liverpool when I got asked to do that. Wow. Uh, just wow. You know, starting my works. I was 15 then, um, oh, 1962 or something, you know. I mm -hmm. found the cabin. I would found, you know, the clubs that go there in the lunch hour sessions, see different bands. Uh, yeah. Saw all those Liverpool band, the Searchers, and you know, ah. the Bojos and all those guys. Um, it was great, it was a great place. Liverpool's a fantastic city. Uh, go there, you want to go for holiday, go to Liverpool, have a few okay. hours, enjoy yeah. yourself. I've never been, so I'd love to go. Ah, the people are great, nice. really funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> really funny people, man. Uh, and they're great, they'll tell you a joke if you want to, you know. You know, if you ask them the way somewhere, they'll tell you the way and they'll tell you a joke at the same time. It's great. <laughs> it's not That's great. Funny guys. Honestly. Yeah, to take with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, go. I mean, did you always want to be in a band or did you want to go solo? Like, what was the impetus to do? I never really thought about it. I never really thought that I'd be that good. I'd go and see, like, the Mojos. Yeah. Uh, and they were extraordinary. I thought they were just great. And I could, right. I could swear now, you know, like I say. But... I thought they were great, and the, you know the searches were fantastic on stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know the Beatles, the Beatles were really good too. You know, <laughs> the, the big three were great. You know, I've heard some good things. Great bands, you know, loads of great yeah. bands. 
I met Frida Kelly and all those, uh, wow. all the people around in the scene, Billy Kinsley. Mm -hmm. I got a job with the Mersey Beats, you know, after oh, wow. playing a couple of years in groups. Uh, it was it was just a great experience for me because I wasn't mm -hmm. I wasn't really dreaming about it. I didn't think I'd be a good enough player to play in a band. Right. You know, wow. I mean, you know. Yeah, you were just going with it. Yeah, I just was really enjoying it. I loved the music, the beat mm -hmm. music. And I played with them guitar for the rest of my life as far as I was concerned. I just wow. really enjoyed it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we played it, we played it good and hard in Liverpool. It wasn't quiet music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This this wasn't any kind of cabaret situation. Right. Uh, this, was, <laughs> this was get on it and play, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honest to God, AC thirties and Selmas and it was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Wow. Yeah. And do you, do you remember like your first paid gig? First paid gig, yeah. I uh, I'm walking through town on on uh, through Liverpool on my lunch, and a guy stopped me in the street, and he actually first time anybody ever said to me, "Are you Joey Moland?" <laughs> said, well, yeah, I am. He said, "I used to watch you playing the guitar on the corner of Penny Lane, which is wow. where me and my mate used to go there, um, and and there was, there was like a bridge going into Sefton Park, mm -hmm. uh, and Penny Lane runs right in, into the park there. Anyway, we used to go around the corner from his house and sit on the corner." Um, and practice our Chuck Berry, you know, that's, we were learning Chuck Berry stuff at the time. Right. Yeah. This guy had seen us. And wow. somehow he saw me walking through Liverpool and he was a drummer. He turned out and he said, do you want to come and play with us tonight? And I said, well, you know, I only know a bit of Chuck Berry, maybe some Buddy Ollie. He said, well, come on, that'll be great. So <laughs> I walked in there that night and I played and they gave me a pound. A wow. pound. And I used to make, I used to work on the docks, I'd make £2.15, mm -hmm. two pounds and fifteen shillings a week. You right, know, wow. That's and crazy. And gave me a pound and they said, can you come back tomorrow? <laughs> 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 well, they gave me another pound and that was the start of it for me. Oh, that's great. Wow. And yeah, and that's, that's a great story. first gig story. Yeah, that's the way it worked. His uncle, well, now the, the, the singer's uncle, Pete, the singer was a fellow named Pete Feldman. Uh, mm -hmm. He was the first songwriter that I met. Okay. Uh, he actually mm -hmm. wrote his own songs. We recorded a couple of them quite soon after that. Yeah. It's been like 60, 63 or something. Uh, the, he went into a recluse world. He, 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 he's, he's like a recluse now. Wow. I'm really? telling everybody, Pete. I'm telling <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to spill the beans. Yeah. We'll yeah, find yeah, him. Yeah. But he was a great songwriter, I thought. And uh, somewhere there's a little demo with us playing on it, you know, like a little acetate. I always wonder wow. how many demos, how many first tapes, how many how many uh, songs got lost from people who either just didn't, you know, gave it up or or didn't want to hold on to that stuff or didn't think it was any good, you know? Yeah, yeah. And no, nobody it's, ever knows, you know, whether a song's going to be a hit. You know, yeah. how many times well, it's a smash. <laughs> right the tubes, you know? Yeah, the fortune on this right down the tubes. This guy, right, right down the tubes. Wow. <laughs> There's just no way of knowing. So, it's yeah, just so many damn shame. What was your first? Did you want to go on the road right away? Like, or did you like playing locally? Like, what was your? uh How did you get the trajectory to going from like? It was all new to me. Uh, um, I remember we went from this little basement club and we got a residency uh at a place called the Blue Angel, which is quite a famous. A drinking club in Liverpool. Okay. Uh, all the rock stars would come there after they played The Empire. We saw wow. Bob Dylan there. Oh and my we, God. We went upstairs. We were playing downstairs. Right. We were, and there was Bob Dylan at the bar. Oh, <laughs> did you talk to him? No. Are you kidding me? I thought he started to cry. I wow. He actually started to cry. And he was a big tough guy from Dingle. <laughs> it was weird to see it. And when we used to do a Dylan song, so it was important to us. Yeah, you uh, covered one, right? It belongs to me, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a good yeah. one. That was the first record we made. Um, oh, that's, you know, it was, that's fantastic. It, I don't know that I would go up to Dylan at a bar either. Well, playing around was great and playing live and, and yeah. getting the gigs on the other clubs. And when, when we started to go on the road, you know, go up to Scotland and uh, places like Newcastle, Carlisle and that, um, it was great. It was, I just really enjoyed it. I'd never been anywhere. 
I've yeah. only ever been in Liverpool. Well, we went through this little holiday when I was a kid, you know, mm. up in the mountains. <laughs> there were little places where you could go, rent a caravan. You know what a caravan is? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we'd rent a caravan and do that. Yeah. Nice. For snakes and, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. No, wow. no, I've had a good life. I've really, uh, really enjoyed it. I was a great mum and dad, great family, you know. Yeah. Music just kept on going. People yeah. kept saying, will you come and play for us tonight? Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Of course. And if a job came, I used to go and try and get it. Right. You know, when the Rolling Stones, when the guy left the Rolling Stones, I tried to get that job. I was really? How old were you? I'd think it in, yeah. I remember Derek Taylor, do you know who he is? Yes. Yeah. Derek, Derek cut my, my eyes out <laughs> out of a picture, just my eyes, and he sent it to Rolling Stones. <laughs> 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 he said, Are you sure you want that? <laughs> That's great. So I had another drink. I said, Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's fucking amazing. It's all crazy stuff. Yeah. Well, wow. I, always, I always want to know what, what was the point where you were like, where you thought, did you, where you thought you were good, where you thought you were really good on stage, where you're like, I've got this, I know exactly what I'm doing, I'm ready for anything. Oh, dream on, man. <laughs> <laughs> dream on. We were so nervous, all of us, not only me, but uh, the Bad Finger Band. Yeah. Uh, Pete and Tommy and Mike. Uh, we were all really nervous about us because we, we went and looked at other bands, you know. Yeah. And, like band members do. And we always thought they were better than us. Wow. They were always wow. tighter. Uh, we didn't really think that they could sing better. Mm -hmm. Tommy, Tommy and Pete were, could sing as good as anybody, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So it, 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 we didn't think of it in that way. But as far as our playing and stage presence and all of that, Right, they, they, they seemed to just run rings around us, and when we came to America, it was worse. <laughs> <laughs> American musicians were uh, so well, so well trained, you know, developed. They knew about music, they knew scales, they knew right. uh, read, read how to sight read. Like in England, uh, school music is mm -hmm. really basically singing hymns, you know. Right, right, right. It's not like in America where they teach you music. Yeah, read music and write music, and right. you know, what, what it is, uh, we never got any of that. So, the American musicians seemed to us to have it all over us. Uh, wow. yeah. yeah, what was your what, what was the band's writing process like when you were in band Bad Finger? Was it collaborative? Was it just uh, a couple of people? Did you guys get to interject anything? Yeah, we did. Uh, our basic uh, approach you, know, you, you get an idea for a song. And, and and you you know you write it and finish it as best you can, mm -hmm. and you you know you take it uh, to the band, and, and the way Apple gave us the Abbey Road, you know, right. So we could go in Abbey Road and start laying in the songs. Wow. You know we didn't have to rehearse in the basement over there. Yeah. We'd go there, and this gave us this enormous freedom uh, to make records that were totally just us. Right. We learned the song. We didn't have orchestras and everything. Yeah. Uh, and we, and we, we could play the piano a little bit. You right. Know I mean? And so we'd learn the song from scratch with the guy who wrote it. You know, like, wow. um, you know, P, whatever it could be, some, you know, name of the game or something like that. Sure, sure. He, he was, he was, he was streets ahead of us and he was really getting hot then. Mm hmm. Right at that period, wow. um, you know, 1970, he was, and he wrote No Matter What and all that. Mm -hmm. And he'd come in, we learned No Matter What that night in the studio. We didn't wow. practice it wow. or anything. We learned it, uh, and, uh, you know, I played some arpeggios behind it while he was, and uh, that everybody said, oh, that work, you know, and then, we, you know, just... Just, just did it, and then oh, we need a guitar solo. Okay, well, what about that? You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that works. That's awesome. And wow. so we'd be able to play the song up from the beginning to the end with the solo. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, now, you know what I mean? We could do it now. We'd learn it, and then we'd record it. Yeah, the four of us, and then we'd maybe, you know, overdub a chop guitar or something like that or yeah we do the harmonies and, and, and uh, finish the song and that was our general way of every song that we did wow so some of them were piano and a 12 string uh, right 
no matter gut string guitar finger picking in the back mike in the background playing the drums the way only he played yeah uh, so we had this little bit of a sound going and like, like i said before tommy and pete could sing anything you know right anything. uh they were like paul and john in, in a lot of ways you yeah know, two really strong singers uh who like to sing together mm -hmm. you know? yeah yeah uh, yeah it was it, it was a knock it was not oh we have a question uh from one of our viewers yeah steven says whose idea was it to change the ivy's band name to badfinger was it the significant what was the significance of the name it was only it was, it was only there was another band in england called um the ivy league that was one of the things that pumped it uh the band had started out in swansea as a, as a rhythm and blues rock and roll band and because they'd started writing songs uh -huh. uh, the songs were kind of twee and so mm -hmm. they turned into a real pop band and they wanted to get back to a bit more rock you know okay so they wanted a more rocky sound and name and they thought like everybody else thousands of names later and uh, and uh, neil aspinall said what about bad finger and I <laughs> that was a uh bad finger he said it comes from an old record i've got bad finger boogie and uh, he told <laughs> us it was like a three-fingered uh, blues pianist wow and this wow. is actually what he told us but it was a bunch of bull wasn't it he was just giving <laughs> us along uh, and it was the name of uh, it was the, it was the name john played the piano john lennon uh, on a little help from my friends and he and he screwed up a few things and so it was they called it bad finger boogie uh, <laughs> Wow. So it, came, it came from that that's where the name came from wow and, uh, yeah yeah that's that's it. incredible there's the story <laughs> yeah that's great i never knew that's that a story um <laughs> so i know uh, day after day was like one of your most popular songs with the band did you have a song that you it was your favorite to play that maybe never quite caught on as well oh a lot of great songs uh, uh but not really well not really you know i think there was you know pete wrote great songs for there all through that period right uh, you know name of the game we the have the off, midnight caller uh you know i i can't take it uh yeah you know, loads of them all different styles you know acoustic and real pop uh no one knows it no one knows it really yeah often uh you know tommy was learning to play the piano and really appreciating the the kind of melodies you could develop from a piano mm -hmm. and uh yeah it was, it was i'm telling you it was really knockout it was like your mates coming up with ideas for songs and you're 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 doing your own bit you know coming up well, i was coming up with a few ideas actually mm -hmm. ended up right now for the music oh the, nice that the band recorded you know wow um I had a couple of a couple of uh, kind of singly things uh, that they put out. Um, a song called "Love Is Easy," which was a medium oh. and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> why? It was, it was a lot of fun, you know. It was too loud, you know. When 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 the record would play on the radio, it only played a few times. The, the when it came to the guitar solo, we plugged the guitar into every amp in the studio. Wow. send them all full on <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that was the guitar track for it <laughs> holy shit and the, the, the needles would jump and stuff like that get out just get out. <laughs> yeah yeah oh my god yeah there's yeah. loads of songs midnight call is a great song. midnight call is one of my favorites too yeah yeah it's a 12 string and on a piano is what that sound is all around on it oh wow i never knew that that's what that's that's what we did with uh, and that that's really all that's on there you know i think um, when you were coming up with the music for it did you like to hear the like were you did you like to use the lyrics or did you come up with your own tune first and then try to match them how did that work for you oh for songs i wrote myself you yeah mean? yeah um they both ideas would generally come up once no and, wow. then, and then i would I, I would get some phonetic sounds coming out of my mouth mm -hmm. uh, and things and i would tie that together with with the the guitar bit that i had that i had the chord sequence or whatever and uh i'd keep always always sing the melody wouldn't change the melody at all because there are little nuances in melody melody yeah uh, you know we all we all bought little tape recorders 
Oh, wow. Because we knew that we had to record the right. song right away because you lose it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'd do them both at once, but it would, it would always take longer to work out the uh, the lyric and make the lyric work and stay consistent with what the song was about in the first place. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how, that's how I think that's how, you know, Pete did it. I think that's how Tommy did it. And, you know, that's the way I did it. And, nice. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. There's a lot of guys uh, that we've had on that are musicians and stuff like that. And it, I just always find it fascinating which one comes to them first. And only a few had said both lyrics and music kind of combine at the same time. Some people are either like, I have a tune I can't get rid of in my head, and then the lyrics come later, or they have to write it out first. But that's cool that you can do both. Yeah, you have to. Well, I don't know how that works. I mean, of course, you're, sometimes you do get a phrase or, you know, something. something. I, I had an idea about a month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I woke up and I had this idea. I had a dream last night, mm -hmm. and then a star was born this morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, the world was round, and that's the ground I walk on. And wow. uh, uh, like that was really, really, I was really impressed with myself. Yeah, know? that's great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> about three lines since then. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's. <laughs> you know, but yeah. That's it, awesome. It, it, it's going to be a song of uh, the where the human race. Mm -hmm. We've got to get over all this other bullshit that's on. Oh and yeah, where the yeah. human race with all these tribes yet and all this, and you're from this town, he's from that town. Who you know, it doesn't matter. We still all live on this planet yep. all together. Yes, you know, you've got to get it together. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You, you've really got to do with it. And, that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> 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 I've not got any solutions or anything. Yeah. Oh, we could talk about taxes. We could talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should change the name of taxes to expenses. And yes. uh, that's what we that's what we're paying. We're yeah, paying absolutely. Americans' expenses, aren't we? Yeah. yeah and absolutely. We've got to pay our share. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. You know, if you make a book in America, man, it's because you're in America. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. I don't, I, I nearly said something there, but I don't really care it's, about uh, we're all Americans, you know what yeah. I mean? We're living in America, we're all Americans, we've all got to pay our share. And those rich people make mm -hmm. all the money, don't pay their share. Nope, Most I agree with you, man. Any share at all. What is that? Where's their model fortitude, you know, their strength? The yes, sense, I've got to pay my way. We were just talking about billionaires and like, how the hell do you have that much money and not and not start giving it out and not start putting it towards causes yeah, and different how, things you can do? How, what do you what do you? How can you do that? Yeah, exactly. It's insane. There's the five richest people in the world are you know are already and the, and the craziest thing is is that they're just bald, ugly white dudes, <laughs> and you're like, how the holy hell did you you know? They all look like Lex Luthor. <laughs> It's insane. But we never had anything else to do but make money. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we all have lives going on. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't. Families. They didn't, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have talent or nice hair. Uh, yeah. they, they had, <laughs> that's that's all they had, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. No, I'm right there with you. What do you think of the whole stuff that's going on with like uh, Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and. Um, oh, my God. Uh, Graham Nash. They're all pulling their music off of Spotify. I think it's pretty cool. I do. I think it's. I think it really is. When you can use your web, your, your your stuff as a target like that, or yeah. as a tool like that, I think yeah. it's great. You know, Neil Young's such an enormous uh, songwriter. Yeah. When he pulls his music, it really does mean something. I could pull my music too, but it really wouldn't. You know, who gives a shit? You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know so, but I think it's great that these guys are doing this, and I've always admired uh, the big artists, if you like. Yeah. Uh, who do these kind of things and try and make a bit of change. Yeah, and I know, man. Move it, things, you know. Yeah, they've got the audience. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, it's great yeah, if you I can make some noise and you wind up doing it for good. Yeah, yeah. I applaud them. Really yeah. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I didn't, I I mean, I, you know, before all this stuff was going on, I downloaded Spotify. I've had it on my computer. I've got Apple Music. I've got anything that gets me more music. So yeah. I've got all the, all this stuff or whatever. But it is kind of funny when you do notice when those songs disappear because you're just like, you're like, oh my God, like there's like my playlists have changed. Like all this stuff has changed. Like, you know, it's weird. It's wow. not cool to have stuff taken off of a thing. Yeah. 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 So you're like, you're, it does make an impact. You're, you are kind of like, I don't want to do this anymore. 
That's right, and it brings attention to the other to the other side of it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's good. It's Do you remember a time when you were on the road where you thought, uh, like, uh, we've had some crazy stories about fan interactions and like, uh, you know, after show experiences and crazy like that. Did you guys catch that wave back then of like, you know, fans going crazy, being on tour with other bands, and being on tour yourself when you were really big? We did the. Uh, I guess suppose we did. We experienced that we came. Uh, America was really our first experience of really going on the road. Yeah. And also being in a completely strange place where we didn't know anything. Right. And so after the shows, we would go out and meet the people in the car park. And oh, stuff, that's brave. You know, and just, uh, well, we had nothing to be scared of, you know. Right. But other than we didn't know anybody and we wanted to know people, we wanted to make friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to meet people. We'd go home with fan with with people at the concerts. We'd go home and have dinner with them at their house. Wow! Uh, meet their mum wow. and dad and all of that stuff. Because that's what we kind of did in Liverpool, you know. Uh, you know what I mean? It was just <laughs> that's what we wanted to do desperately. And Americans very hospitable, uh, very nice to us. Our music wasn't very threatening or anything. Right. Right. And uh, they like meeting all these guys from England and all. Oh that. yeah, listen to the way they talk and all that stuff. Yeah, so that's really what we did. Um, and we met girls and we had our situations. You know, uh, we had our crazy nights. Uh, we had mm -hmm. our, we had our you know silly nights. You know, <laughs> you know, we had our accidental nights and things like that. You know? <laughs> it, was, it was just good. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, all the bands, you know, you bump into bands. We bumped into Joe Cocker once. In, in, oh no way! You know, things like that in, in airports and sure. You know, even at even at uh, roadside cafes, you know, it just happens that you stop, you know. And, yeah. And there's another band there. They wow, you know, it's right. crazy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did a little bit of that in England, uh, a little bit in Europe, but it was in America where we really got on the road and, and started doing that. Right. And, Again, it was great. We interacted with the people. You know, we went in a cafe once in, in Arizona, and they wouldn't serve us. Why? Why? Was, you know, we had long hair and everything, and you know, we had like wow. green jeans on and stuff like that. You know, and right. Mike was dressed like a guru, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> so we went in this in this cafe. I swear to God, they just ignored us. Wow, that's they crazy. Us, uh, uh, and we had money, you know. We yeah, wave money in there. I'm not. I'm not exactly. We completely ignored us, and eventually we left. We didn't know what to do. Wow. wow. Yeah. I didn't. I would never think that would have happened back then. I mean, with with like you know, yeah. guys yeah. from England. That's crazy. And the rednecks were really. You no, know, that was the name of the other people. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was us and the rednecks. It was weird. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, that's a god man. Oh, that's crazy, man. Yeah. I remember one time when I was when I was younger, my uncle came to pick me up from school. Now that you mentioned it, I was just thinking about this. Uh, it was in the 80s, but uh, he had long hair because he liked the hair metal bands, you know, that yeah. came out of the 80s. And he came up to pick me up from like kindergarten one day and like people stopped him because they thought he was like kidnapping me. And they'd be like, do you, John, do you know him? And my uncle would be like, tell them, you know me. And I was like, <laughs> just silent. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Say no, no. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess I do. And they were like, Are you sure? Because he had, and it was all because he had long hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea why. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how old you are, but we were, we were at the, we were at the age when uh, your hair was down to here. Oh you know? wow, yeah. It was, yeah. it was like really longer, and the straights uh, would be really short-haired people. <laughs> they'd all be big. Only big guys, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah, they all have the same really, look. Really different to us. And we, you know, we were smoking a bit and doing that, you know, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We went, we went <laughs> mad druggies and nothing like that. Right, but, right. But yeah, yeah, like copper buzz now and again. <laughs> What's that? What, <laughs> <laughs> What's the? Do you have like a, a a moment where you're smoking weed with another like famous band that you remember out of the blue, like somebody that you really wanted to smoke with? <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, that took a long time to achieve that. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. It really did. Uh, you know, but, you know, you get on the road and start doing things. You meet really interesting people. all just stay, people like that. You know, wow. Yeah. Just, just such a great guy. Yeah. 
really funny. People forget the, uh, you know, he, he was he, he was an actor, right? He yeah. Was, he was, and he, he acted uh, Otis Stay. That was a role he played. Right. But, People would never ever let him leave that role. He lived the rest of his life. Yeah, he's wow. still alive now. Hello, uh, hello. <laughs> just great people like that, Clark and the Drifters, and oh yeah, and stuff like that. The lead singer from the Platters. Uh, oh man, yeah. And you bring that up that you met them, and someone will go, "Boy, you know what?" <laughs> He'll tell you the story about him. It. <laughs> it's really fantastic, but. Anyway, it, it was just great, just a great life. Yeah, we. Uh, well, go ahead, Tom. No, no, go ahead. You're good. Oh, you're I was good. Gonna, oh, uh, I was gonna say the the um, if you could at any point in time though, like if you could look out into your audience and see somebody that you really admired watching you play, do you know who it would be? Do I? Oh, <laughs> uh, Chuck Berry. <laughs> Chuck Berry. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought I would shock, man. Yeah. I, um, I don't know anybody, anybody famous watching me play. Uh, it make, make me a bit nervous, but I'd be really knocked out that they were. You know what? We The first gig we played in New York City, mm -hmm. we played a place oh. called Ungano's. Oh, and wow. uh, it was a little club. And uh, we went down there uh, and we got all set up and... Uh, we did the sound check and we're hanging about there and George Harrison walked in. Oh, wow. wow. George Harrison. Oh, shit. And, uh, I mean, I know, you know, we've read the Beatles and, you know, when we were with Apple, but he was still George Harrison. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he come in and he had a little briefcase and and uh, he sat down right in front of the stage. We're going to watch the show and all that. We, we took some photos and all that. All mm -hmm. But the place went mad. It was super pressure, you know, everybody. Yeah. Everybody was really cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> journalist, every journalist in the world was there. And uh, oh, it was, he, he, he actually recorded the band. He had, he had a little uh, recording set up in this briefcase. <laughs> wow. The, the mic's out. <laughs> he sat there and recorded the band and he stayed for the entire show. He didn't split or nothing. Holy shit. And so he was really complimentary. He was really sweet. Uh, wow. Past years with him, so that was that was a big you know a big night like you know what I mean? Yeah, it was just super. Um, I can't remember. I know I know other people came to see us, but off the top of my head, I can't really remember it. You know, I was gonna say yeah, playing for George Harrison in the audience. I mean, Chuck Berry would be great too, but if George Harrison walks in, that make me nervous. <laughs> yeah, well, George, I, he was really sweet, you know, really nice. Yeah. He was to us anyway. And, I was waiting for you to say uh, that's when he stole driving my car from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were knocking it around. <laughs> he, he finally went back to John and Paul and was like, I've got one of my own. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to believe it. And they're like, we actually don't believe it. I don't know. That was the moment Paul said, no, that's my song. <laughs> You saw the uh, documentary too, huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. Do you, what was your, how did you get uh, your first TV spot when you got to America? Oh, Dick Clark or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Dick Clark. Yeah, that's what it is. He, he loved our band. Oh, wow. Dick really loved our band all the way through until Tommy and I had the band in the, in the early 80s. Wow. Uh, he had us on his show and stuff. Yeah. He seemed like a great guy. He was a lovely man. Like he really. wasn't faking any of that enthusiasm he had for music and the bands and stuff. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, I'll tell you a story. Uh, he invited, we did the last time we did American Bandstand, mm -hmm. uh, the, the American Music Awards were on like a couple of weeks later and he gave us in, invites, you know, to oh, go. Wow. Oh, and this is the one with Michael Jackson and all that, the Globe and all that stuff. Oh, no way. Wow. And uh, so we went to the show. It was just great. And mm -hmm. a party afterwards. Um, me and me and Kathy uh, went go go to the party. It's on the lot, you know, in a big, you know, one of the whatever studio or something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we go walking in the door, and I hear this voice shouting, "Joey, Joey, Joey!" And look over there, there's the clock. Oh. And he's, he's, he's standing there with Chuck Berry. Oh no way! Wow. And he, he, he's calling me over, come here, come here. <laughs> he knows I love Chuck Berry. Yeah, he yeah. I love Chuck Berry. And he, 
he brings me over and he, he says, Joey, Joey. And he says to Chuck Berry, you know Joey Mullen, don't you? <laughs> he's supposed to know me you know and <laughs> Chuck rubbed his elbow on me wow, wow. <laughs> it was fantastic stuff I love it I oh love my it. god yeah yeah so, that's, great. that's incredible so that's the way we well, that's the way we uh, think. I think we probably were all midnight special we, we did midnight special live I've seen uh, that one which on was, YouTube it was kind of navy uh, midnight, midnight special was a cool show back in the day right yeah yeah it was that was like the hip that was like the the main one to do yeah yeah mama cash was the host i think at all. oh my god and murray the night we played oh used wow to, used to have guest hosts on it uh but it was great we went right on there and played played suitcase one of the songs that was oh yeah, yeah, yeah and we jammed on it you know it wasn't like the record at all you know? right yeah <laughs> we've got those echo plexus you yeah know, the, the little saber yep oh yeah it was not it was not man when you're when you're playing when you're playing live do you prefer to 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 switch it up a bit to make to like play the song a little differently than you did it on the record or do you like to try to get it exactly well, stuff like a song like baby blue you know uh we i do it like the record we do it we do when we did it like the record we never changed it at all but right like suitcase or better days or you know yeah. or stuff like that yeah yeah we turn it up a little bit and and nice. get into it because it was it was that error as well bands were jamming a bit you know mm -hmm. they were stretching the music a little bit this way and that rocking it up a little bit more than it was you know yeah People told me they were really surprised when they saw us you know when we first came here mm -hmm. we played we played our hit you know come and get it and right uh, and no matter what and uh but we'd be doing things like a whole lot of love Mm -hmm. uh you know yeah. band songs cripple creek and all that yeah yeah um, steve miller my dad yeah. oh you know uh what the steve miller number five what a killer record that was great you know, it was our record it was on all the time at the, <laughs> at the band house such a great record i told him that years later uh and not went and knocked on his trailer and uh, hello this voice hello, hello hello and they said there uh, I'm Joey Mullen from Bad Finger. We were on the sound of festival together, Mile High Stadium. And uh, I'm, I'm Joey Mullen from Bad Finger. Can I, he said, Well, come in. I'm Steve Miller from Steve Miller. <laughs> it was so great. And, then, and I just told him how much we played his record and loved his stuff. And, wow. Uh, he was really sweet, really nice. And then, and then you know, left. Never saw him again after that. Although ah. I, did, I did play in a band with Greg Douglas, who wrote um he was with steve miller for years yeah. great guitar player incredible lives in san diego still, right. a, still a good pal of mine uh, oh nice yeah yeah it's good it's good 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 hey <laughs> what comes to mind i mentioned san diego and i met bill walton there you know the, the basketball player yeah, yeah yeah he's a real rock and roll fan he loves rock music wow yeah. i would and never guess that Honest to God, he's such a he's such a gentleman. I can't say this enough. Such <laughs> a gentleman, he's great. He asked me, did I want a pint? And I told him, told him yeah, I'd love a pint. And he gave me his he gave me his American Express card. <laughs> he said he had a song me and he bought and I took his card and went to the bar with him. <laughs> it's really, I don't know for you guys, but it's a big thrill for Bill Walt to give me his credit card. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what a sweet oh. another lot of money to go. I don't know that I would have come back. <laughs> that would have been the last time anybody saw me. Imagine Bill Walton being after you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've got pictures of him. He's like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah, man. Yeah, if I stood next to Bill Walton, it would look like he won me as an award. Like that's how short I am. <laughs> like, yeah, happy right. to accept this award. Um, <laughs> we had a. Uh, I was gonna say we have a question from Stephen Canova again. Is what was your favorite album to play on? All Things Must Pass, Concert for Bangladesh, Ooh. or Imagine? That's a tough one. Whoa, um, well, they're completely different experiences, you know. So they're all they're all individuals for me. Uh, Georgia, the, the All Things Must Pass was a fantastic experience. Uh, uh, everybody came in every day, worked on the tunes, did all the normal recording stuff you were doing. But you got to sit there and watch these guys working their parts 
Mm. You know, little sly bits or, uh, you know, Billy Preston, you know, or, uh, yeah. you know, whoever Klaus, you know, didn't, didn't matter really. Uh, we were just kind of like flies on the wall. And we played acoustic. George said, just keep it straight. That's all. all right. he, knew we, he knew we'd be able to learn the songs quick. He, we wrote the same kind of songs as they wrote. We grew up in the same town. We mm -hmm. knew the songs they did on the radio. We'd, right. we'd learned all those songs. I knew all the Buddy Ollie songs inside wow. out. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. So we had all this stuff in common. I think that's what he knew about us. And that's why he, he said, you know, get these guys to come and do that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Going yeah. to John Lennon's house and, and, and making, being on a record with him is unbelievable to me. Right. Uh, go in there. And we only played on two songs, and we were only supposed to do one. It was like a, it was like a bit of a miracle, you know. Wow. Um, and really, one of the great, great highlights of my life that hmm. that four hours or five hours, whatever it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was like a little five-piece band. <laughs> so it was only John, mm -hmm. the bad, us, us, Tommy, and I. Yeah, uh, Klaus Foreman, Jim Keltner, and Nicky Hopkins. Wow. And John came in and he's John Lennon. What are you going to do? You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know yeah. And, so, it's like, ah. <laughs> and he says, Oh, this is a new song we're going to do. Uh, it's called Jealous Guy. And it goes like this. And he's sitting there on his stool with his head and, and, and singing into your head, you know, because you get your headphones. Yeah, up. yeah. He's sitting there like five feet away singing. It's jealous wow. Guy. <laughs> wow. What are you going to do? You know, it's yeah. just, just incredible. And everybody's going, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> we're looking at the chords. And, <laughs> well, it's, it's just like a it's surreal experience. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, man. It was great. It was that great. Incredible. Was great. So I, I really loved doing them all in answer to the guy's question. Uh, Bangladesh was great. Uh, getting the rhythm beds together with Ringo and uh, George and Klaus Vorm and at, at the we were at the Steinway, you know, where the Steinway building is. In yeah. York. We were upstairs yeah. in the rehearsal room, or you know, where they practice this stuff, whatever. Right. And uh, just the five of us uh, like doing the rhythm tracks for All Things Must Pass, because that's right. all the music that, that uh, George had, you know, wow. the Bangladesh yeah. song, of course. Yeah. Uh, and doing the, you know, the Madison Square Garden thing uh, is fabulous, isn't it? You know. Sure. The felt forum, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anna Daly did this. this. Yeah, it was great. Bob Dylan came to the sound check on wow. Saturday. And uh, we didn't, nobody knew that he was coming. Um, but he just showed up at the sound check. We'd done the dress rehearsal and we're waiting for the cars mm -hmm. to go to take us back to the hotels. Yeah. And, uh, Bob Dylan walked on stage with his guitar and his harmonica. And he walked over and set himself a mic up and started playing Bob Dylan's songs. <laughs> oh, wow. my God. There's about 20 or 30 of us, you know, yeah. the, the Bangladesh band and all that. And we're just sitting there. I mean, no, we didn't expect it. Right. George and Ringo. I mean, George and, and uh, Leon Russell. <laughs> Pretty much ran to the stage <laughs> and got their guitars out, you know. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. He must have played for about 40 minutes. Wow. Wow. And then he was playing all that. Just the, the Bob Dylan. So it's Bob Dylan. That is crazy that he just yeah, walked yeah. on stage and did that. Yeah. Yeah, he did. It was just amazing. Amazing. It was. I wonder if he thinks like, wow, this is going to be something they're going to be talking about for years. And then just starts playing <laughs> like out of the blue. Like, I, that's I crazy. Know what Bob Dylan thinks like I've, been, I've got <laughs> right? like uh, Bob Dylan interviews in my toilet where I go read them while I'm getting them <laughs> and uh, it's great the things he says. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's lovely, so direct and everything. Right, but man, those songs. Eh? Did you see that documentary his son did on Laurel Canyon? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. What'd you think of it? It was pretty yeah. cool. I never knew any of that stuff. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Uh, we used to go up on Laurel Canyon up there. We'd see, um, you know, Laurel George and, and, few, and some of those guys, you know, right. the, the Three Dog Night guys. I got to know, uh, uh, boy, I can't remember his bloody name, though. The singer from Three Dog Night, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
I know you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I was with him in a boy's mind because his name's gone right out of me. Oh I'm God. sorry, man. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, yeah, it was oh lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'll get it in two seconds because this happens every episode of this. It's almost a staple of this show. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Danny Hutton. No, 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 no. No? <laughs> no, no. no, the other guy. Oh, um, oh, there were two other guys. <laughs> oh my god, wait a minute. Uh, Jimmy Greenspoon, no, no, the other guy, no, the other guy. All right, give me a second. Not <laughs> that other guy, but <laughs> well, yeah, Wikipedia is failing me right now. We're gonna cut all this out, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 40 minutes of who's the lead singer, <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Harvey. It was oh, Lawrence Harvey, Lawrence Harvey. Okay, got it. <laughs> God. <laughs> hilarious i'm like wait the yeah, other yeah. Guy? that yeah. was great you know what i enjoy about that whole little bit right there is what? that your computer failed you in his mind yeah he finally yeah it. exactly i was right? like i'm scrolling through <laughs> names i'm like is it this guy yeah i know yeah. that was great yeah the computer to chip and wouldn't you just say the name <laughs> <laughs> i know i know this cost me how much <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think i'm getting ripped off you know what's crazy? I was reading, I was uh, listening to an interview with Steve. <laughs> I was listening to an interview with Steve Miller, and he was talking about kind of bands today versus like, you know, the 70s and the 80s, where basically like he, he said something interesting that I never really picked up on before. But he basically said, you know, you see a band now and you can't tell the difference between them and the roadies. <laughs> And I laughed and I was like, that's so fucking true. Do you feel the same? Because everybody had their own distinct look from like the 70s to the 80s, man. Every band had a, like a crazy identity, crazy style. And now everybody kind of dresses the same. Does that bum you out a little bit? No. Oh, that's no, good. No. He see, it seemed to, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It seemed to bum Steve out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The bands, uh, I don't, I, I don't really know a lot of the bands nowadays. Um, I don't hear a lot of really different sounding music. I hear yeah. a lot of the, the same same sound of music. It does well, kind of sound the same. You know, it's a different world. Doesn't every, do, do, does everybody make the records their own now, or you know, on computers, or not with the rest of the band, or right? You know, they do half a song and then chop it up and do all yeah. that. So that the, the what's what's it called? Patching, whatever. Yeah. It is. You know, or like anybody that wins an award for a song now, and they're like uh, written by, and then there's like the entire city of uh, you know, uh, <laughs> city, small city in <laughs> Iowa gets on stage with them, and they're like, we each wrote one word for the song. You know, at the same time, um, you know, you, you, you see, you know, bands like Metallica. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that those four guys get together. Absolutely, and yeah, and work it out. Yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, so. I don't know if it's if it's really like you know all the young musicians are doing it this way or that way or the other. Yeah, uh, and I know when I heard you know and and this is you know as modern as I get, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know when I heard bands like Tool and, and uh, stuff, oh yeah, they had it was a, it was a development of, of those sounds that that started to come in the sixties, seventies, and eighties, and all right. That. Uh, those things. So, you know, I'm sure that the bands today working in basements, getting it together, doing yeah. the best they can. And when they go in the studio, that's the only thing they know is, is yeah. work it out together and do it. And there are other kids who get, you know, a, a Mac and, and, and it's loaded up with all the gear and yeah. every effect you've ever had and they can make a, you know, a record. And, and right. then you get a, Who's the guy? Ed She was his name. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yeah, yeah. Going out there and filling stadiums all by himself. Right. Exactly. But, yeah, the, that guy's great. Box, and he, and he just sings and plays. Yeah. You know, so and, everything in between is going on. I yeah. Uh, Have you ever seen him in concert? It's actually I I had gotten a couple of tickets. I didn't actually go. My wife went. She said yeah. it's amazing. He lays down every part of the song himself. Like he plays yeah. the guitar, saves it, lays down a drum beat himself, saves it on stage as he's produ and he almost like produces it and sings it to the audience solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, right? It's an it interesting. Is, it is. Fascinating. Fascinating. interesting or greedy. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be a billionaire. Good looking at yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, if he's not already. Yeah. 
Uh, there's a there's a band that I love out of London right now um, called Wolf Alice that I think you'd like. Oh, what Wolf Alice? Wolf Alice is the name of the band. Yeah, oh, okay. and the lead singer is uh, Ellie Rossell, and oh. uh, they're come they come they're in London right now. Well, they they're from London, but they um, they tour and all tour all over, and uh, they're really really great. I think you'd like them. Yeah, I'd like to go see them. Yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I don't really listen to the radio much. Uh, I don't listen to the radio either, to be honest. You know, <laughs> no, you know, I don't. I play, I play, I play, and uh, I play me old records. I still buy records, old records. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I put them on. I, uh, I really enjoy it. I just yeah, enjoy it. I have a record yeah. player right over here. I just started. Uh, whenever I go out on the road, my my uh, uh, friend and I. We do travel together to do stand up. We'll go and buy like we'll go to old vintage shops and like try and find records. I'll just do that, and I've got like a bunch that I just like to play. It's yeah. fun. I even like them when they're kind of you know got that static on them. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some I just like it. Files. Where they spilled the coffee on it. Yeah, like yeah. It's already <laughs> kind of busted. I honestly have a couple Dylan records like that, and I'm like, I think it makes. I love uh, it. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty uh, great. That's actually how he recorded them. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's my I CDs. I made Christmas presents for people uh, with me favorite songs from you know, right place, wrong time. Oh my uh, God, I Rocky would love baby, uh, you know, yeah. like that. And I gave them to all my mates for Christmas. Uh, I love that stuff. How do I get on that Joey Molland mixtape Christmas list? Because I would like one. <laughs> I call Chris it in lieu of a Christmas gift. Is what I call it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, genius. Yeah, it was a great cheap way to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they that's pretty great. Say, yeah, that's good. I love it. That is great. <laughs> they would CDs, really. I suppose. You know? Yeah. We have, we have a good friend of the show, Mike Rowe. He just uh, tuned in and he said he had just spoken to his dad, and his dad had seen you play in New York in 1972 at the Ritz Theater. Remember that oh, show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had fun and games that night, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, it's funny where you can remember certain things, uh, certain shows. Uh, it seems like actually when somebody mentions your show, I can remember uh, the Ritz Theater. I can remember going there. Uh, I'm playing. I'm playing. I can't really remember the show so much, but mm -hmm. just going there and being there, uh, uh, it's some, it's something how that happens. I don't know. You you know the way your mind just locks it in, and yeah, the way over there, you can remember the places. I don't drive, so I used to ride in in, in the uh, you know the the co-pilot seat, and oh, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd see where we were going, and and I found years later even I could remember. Wow. If we were, we were in the same town going to the same gig, I'd remember things about where it is and where, oh, it's over there. And, and it sounds fantastic, but it's so true. It, yeah. Your mind just locks it all in. It's yeah. Like, oh, you know, you hypnotize, you remember everything. <laughs> right, yeah. 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 Oh, man. I Once again, I think the name of this episode is going to be Joey Marlin, Brain Better Than a Computer. Better Than a Computer, yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> I can't get anywhere without a GPS. Like I've lived, I lived in the same town for like 20 something years and I still couldn't get to the Wendy's down the road without being like, give me a second. <laughs> let me look, let me type it in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I'll this figure it out. Like, you know, in Liverpool and uh, road bikes and all that stuff. We have to find a way ourselves. Right. So, yeah. Do you ever go back across the pond? Yeah. I go uh, They invite me over to do the Beatle week in Liverpool. Oh, um, wow. I don't know, awesome. once every other year or something like that, or every two years. So, yeah, I, I take that opportunity to go over there. And, uh, you know, I've got a big family over there and stuff. And um, I took my girl with me. I've got a new girl now, Mary Mary Joyce. She is lovely. Nice. <laughs> so I take her with me and we go, we'll go to Europe. You know, we did Paris in a day, you know, those oh, kind wow. of things. You know, in England or Europe, you can get a train anywhere. Right, right. right through the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah, exactly. You're you're there, man. You are there. It was, it was great boutique hotel near the station there. Yeah, we just found a hotel, ch 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 checked out, got up in the morning and did Paris. You know, oh, once Notre Dame, the Louvre, all of that. You know, all of those places. It was it was fantastic. Awesome. Nice. I keep saying that about it, but but my life is like that. I, I really do. I you know I grew up in a little working class family in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad never went here never went anywhere unless there was a war on. 
<laughs> he does both of places. You know? <laughs> so, I think that's why a lot of guys like more. It's a great way to put. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm never gonna get out of here with that one. Experience that you have that for you, you know. That's pretty great. It's a great um, dude. Well, listen, man, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. It's been an hour. It blew by. I didn't even realize it's been an hour already. I know it flew. Uh, it was so much fun talking to you. Um, I've got three questions left that we ask every guest. Okay. <laughs> um, so first one is, if you could go back in time and talk to your younger self, what piece of advice would you give yourself to help you today? Ooh, watch out. <laughs> 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 and I've been telling kids this for years. Read your paper. You know, uh, and get a lawyer who can tell you what it means. <laughs> it says this is a cup of coffee. It doesn't really mean that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, this, they could be talking about a leg of lamb for all you know. You know, right? Yeah. So those kind Good of point. Those, those kind of things. That's what I would do. Watch out. Just yeah, <laughs> that's great advice. Yeah, that is <laughs> solid. Um, yeah. And the second question is: Is what had to end in your life? good or bad, in order for you to wind up where you are today? Wow. I, don't know. I had to let a lot, a lot of things go. Uh, I was pretty angry about what happened to Badfinger, to the mm. band. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was down with, you know, with Tommy and Pete and all that. And my, we were all great friends, and some people tried to change that. And try right. to to make draw this picture of the band uh, as something other than uh, four guys who liked each other and played. You know, I went and got yeah. a job in that band. Right, I got the job if they, if we didn't get on. Right. Uh, so those things, those things. Uh, yeah. I had to let it all go and just do what I do and and, and you know develop the confidence to do to do what I do. You know what I mean. Uh, it's kind of weird, you, you know. You grow up, and you, you know, I grew, I grew up in a situation where I, I humble was the way to be. Humble was, well, you know, I didn't walk around thinking I was, I was, I was God's gift to anything. You know, mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm good at this. I'm good at that. I got good mind. I did all that. I don't mind getting up in the morning and going to work. You right. know, it's, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, yeah. So, you know. Just the way it is, a lot, you know, it's it's all, it's all good. You know, right. Let crap go, and it's all good, you know. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I read my book every day. I I do read a, a, a little bit of faith. I get a little bit of a boost in my faith every morning. Nice. Uh, just by reading uh, Jesus Calling is the one I read. So uh, mm. I'm trying to read the Bible, but it, you know, all the begotten and the begotten and, and, and all of that. <laughs> yeah. Too. You know, it's, they got to be kidding. You know what I mean? If they think you're going to read all that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. That was, that uh, was quick, John. I'll give you that one. It's just, you know, I had to make a quick decision of whether or not I wanted to say it or not. But That's why he's famous, man. That's why he's famous. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like, kind of like George Addison, John Lennon. Don't he? <laughs> I like that jacket as well. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorites. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that look. Um, <laughs> and, and the last question I've got for you is one that's a theme. It's a theme of the show. So we call it dystopia tonight. Um, if this was a real dystopia and there were like alien zombies or a comet coming to earth, uh, how would you want to go out? What would be, what would you want to be your last thing you're doing? How would I, how would I go out? I'd like to be with Miguel. I'd like to... <laughs> All right. That's a good way to go. Again, I'm gonna drink and enjoy myself. Great. You'll just be you'll just be a at a pub with your girl. I don't want to meet any aliens. You know, it's okay. You can you can meet the aliens. That's all. Right. I'll I'll be the bouncer at the door. You can you can be safe in a bar. What would be great about seeing a spaceship? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Have you yeah, ever seen anything run, like that? Run, 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 get out of my way. <laughs> Man. I feel like the '60s and '70s were a good time to see an alien or a spacecraft or some stuff. A lot of a lot of weird shit happened. Well, you could blame it on drugs in those days. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's so great. Um, well, th dude, thank you so so much. It was a blast getting to spend time with you and getting to know you a little bit. And we definitely want to try and make we got it. 
We're going to try and come out there March 1st. Wellmont Theater in Montclair, New Jersey. It's in our neighborhood, John. Let's see what we can do about getting up to the yeah. Wellmont Theater March 1st for the Rubber Soul and Revolver when he's performing live in New Jersey. Yeah, we'd Jersey. love to so come. Oh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to see you. It'd be great to meet you, man. Look yeah, it. absolutely. We'll and we could share a I pint. Really, I, I mean, I have really enjoyed myself. And thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. No, it's not us. So people come and see the show. Come and see the show. You like it. You like it. Yes, Absolutely. we're gonna be there. We're gonna try and get a pint afterwards. He might even hang out with you in the car park. We're gonna see yeah. what we can do about <laughs> getting outside I'm of this. I'm game for that. It's all good for me. I'll so bring my American Express. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and after all of that, no, do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Thanks so much, man. It was great. You yeah, take man. it easy, Thanks man. Thanks so much. Day. Have Peace, you too, dude. Thanks. Right. Have a great night. Bye bye. Dystopia tonight.